not a day goes by without someone asking me or messaging me, what do I eat as a vegan? Now, I get that most people that are transitioning to a vegan lifestyle have no clue what vegans really eat, or maybe they just think that they eat salads, but I'm here to tell you that we eat much more than just salads. To be honest, I don't really even eat that many salads. I do like an occasional one, but I prefer more calorie dense, hearty meals like you see right here. So I thought I would take an opportunity to re introduce myself to YouTube and get back to my roots. So I built much of this channel talking about fitness, talking about vegan nutrition, showing my workout, showing what I ate and incorporating some of my lifestyle and like vlogs and things like that. I'm getting back into the swing of things. First things first, if you're new to this channel, this is your first video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button because I'm gonna be making a lot more content regarding how to live a healthy vegan lifestyle and just daily motivation and how to really live in alignment with your core values so that you can have a life full of purpose and fulfillment. Now that that's out of the way, here is a look at what I eat in a day. The only thing that's missing here is my morning smoothie, which I will get into in just a second, but really this is it. And just to give you context for me, my maintenance calories are anywhere from like 2,500 calories to 3,000 calories. So I do eat quite a lot, but I also have quite a bit of muscle on my body, which then raises your basal metabolic rate. So I need more calories to sustain this muscle mass. So these are the four main components of my second and third meal. What I'd like to do is keep them in their own separate Tupperwares. Uh, you could, if you wanted to, just divide them into like two or three different, um, you know, Tupperwares that had all the different ingredients. But I like to keep them separated just because I don't really like all the different food touching in the Tupperware for too long. I like to keep them in the fridge for, I mean, this will last for a couple days. I'm gonna eat this all today and uh, what I'll do is I'll just take it all out and then put it into a plate and then whatever I feel like eating um, You know, I'll portion it out and then just make sure I eat this by the end of the day and In between my meal two and meal three. I will have some type of snack normally. I love fruit So I just have here a banana for today, but I normally swap this out with uh, like peaches or dragon fruit or watermelon or berries or whatever it is, uh, just like a nice healthy snack. Look, I am not a chef. Like I will be the first person to tell you I'm not a chef. It's pretty funny to me that so many people come to me asking me what to cook and, and what to eat because I don't feel qualified whatsoever to be offering people recipes. Like for me, a recipe is just a combination of some really basic ingredients because uh, I've never really been trained how to cook. So what you see here is just me learning over the years and I'm very much a utilitarian. So uh, if it's simple, if it's less than 30 minutes for me to prepare, there's a good chance I'll make it. If it takes longer than 30 minutes, there's a good chance I won't bother just because I don't like spending too much time in the kitchen. Props to those who love cooking. I'm much more of a person that wants to get in and get out and start eating. So the longer it takes, the more uh, hangry I'll get. Right now, my goal is to just maintain, maybe put on a little bit more size, maybe get a little, have a, have a bit of a body recomposition. So I'm eating roughly around my maintenance calories. And the way that I know that is because I track my weight and I do have a scale in my bathroom that I use to see how much I'm weighing you know, sometimes I'll weigh myself every other day or maybe once a week and just see where my weight is trending, either upwards or downwards. And that'll be my indication for either putting on more calories or dialing it back or increasing my weight in the gym, just to make sure that I'm staying roughly on target. I wanna talk a little bit about protein because this is always a really controversial or important topic for anybody that wants to be vegan and is curious or maybe afraid of not getting enough protein on a vegan diet. So let's first talk about how much protein do you actually need? Now, there are many people in the fitness industry that say that you need at a minimum one gram to two grams per pound of body weight, whether you are trying to cut or put on size. So 
I don't follow that. I always have stuck to about the 0.8 to one gram per pound of body weight. And the reason why I follow that is because research shows that anything beyond about 0.8 grams per pound of body weight doesn't translate into more strength gains or more muscle gains, at least in natural athletes. So this is a really good optimized protein intake for anybody out there. What that means when you optimize your protein intake is that you can free up some more calories for carbohydrates and fats. So as you see here, I've got a lot of carbs in this meal plan and 50% of my calories are coming from carbohydrates and I'm ensuring that I get enough protein so that number for me, or that target, I weigh about 180 grams and 0.8 times that would be roughly 140 to 150 grams of protein per day. That is more than enough for me to continue to build muscle or sustain my existing muscle. Another thing about protein is that I do not and have not ever tracked my amino acid profile. So if you are thinking that you have to combine certain proteins or amino acids in order to, to, to make a complete protein, you don't have to do that. The only thing that you should get into the practice of is having a diverse source of different proteins. So as you can see here, I have tofu, I've got lentils, I've got rice and sweet potatoes and broccoli, all of which have different amino acid profiles that tend to balance out and supply enough amino acids to optimize or at least provide enough amino acids for muscle protein synthesis. So I'm just gonna remind you once again, I have built almost all of my muscle on a vegan diet. I became a professional bodybuilder and competed for three and a half years and have never once tracked any amino acids. So that being said, let's get into the actual meals themselves. So the first meal after my coffee is just a smoothie. I really love my morning smoothie. I've been making this recipe for a couple years now and it's my staple. It's delicious. I include some plant milk, I'll have one scoop of veg, vanilla, or just any of the different flavors of veg, nutrition, protein powder. I'll throw in one scoop of creatine plus, which is a great supplement for anybody out there that's an athlete and wants to train and receive the benefits of creatine. I highly recommend it. I'll add banana and berries. The other thing that I like to add to my smoothies is amla powder, which is also known as Indian gooseberry. And the reason I put that in there is it's loaded with vitamin C and also packed with antioxidants. It has one of the highest antioxidant concentrations of any berry. So adding that to my smoothie is gonna help my body recover faster so that I can get back into the gym and push myself and keep making gains. That is my meal number one for the day. Along with my first meal, I like to take my capsule supplements. So what you'll see here is the Veg Essential. This little guy is a once a day capsule that has vitamin B12, vitamin D3, omega-3s, as well as K2. And if you're a vegan or you're somebody that's plant-based, you wanna ensure that you're consuming these vitamins on a daily basis because it is difficult to get the adequate amount from your food and with things like b12 you, you just want to supplement anyway it's not just a vegan issue of, of getting suboptimal levels of b12 the other thing that I, I take is the veg turmeric plus so this is a ayurvedic blend it contains turmeric ashwagandha and rhodiola rosea so these three in combination will help reduce inflammation. There's a lot of other benefits from ashwagandha as well with when it comes to testosterone and with the rhodiola rosea, it helps with mood stabilization or your just overall mood support to keep your spirits up. So I like taking that and it's loaded with antioxidants. So this is a really great, great way to reduce inflammation in the body. And again, help yourself recover so you can train again the next day sooner. After I have my morning shake and my phone calls. Normally what I'll do is I'll go to the gym and train around 10, 11 o'clock, depending on the day. And before I train, I will use the Veg pre-workout and Nitro Pump. These are two really great natural pre-workouts that don't have any unnatural flavorings or food colorings. And there's two different versions. So this one, the pre-workout 
Comes in a couple different flavors. I really love this watermelon one, but it has added stimulant, so it does contain caffeine. So for those of you that like added stimulant, this is a great option. It also has beta alanine, so give you those tingly feelings before entering the gym. And I personally love that feeling and that sensation because it makes my skin crawl and it makes me just wanna go into the gym and just, just, smash some weights. So this is why I love this one. And I will also stack it with the nitro pump. So this is a great vasodilator. It doesn't have any added stimulus. So this is uh, really great for anybody that trains later in the day and doesn't want to be wired after their workout session or just like laying in bed staring at the ceiling because you took 200 milligrams of caffeine at 5 p.m. before your training session. This is a really great alternative that supplies great sustainable natural energy. First meal, what I'm making here is, uh, let's start off with the tofu. So I like to use this brand of tofu just because it is one of the highest protein per gram uh, tofu out there. You can get this at Whole Foods. I, I believe that Trader Joe's and Sprouts also carries its own version or its own brand of this exact same sprouted tofu. So this is what I like to use. Um, that one container contains over, I, I believe about 70 grams of protein. So what I will do is I will chop the tofu up into some really small blocks and then I will just add a marinade. I like to use this coconut aminos teriyaki sauce. I obviously don't avoid soy and you don't have to either as long as you're getting organic soy. Uh, it's a great source of protein and no, it will not feminize you or lower your testosterone levels. That is just misinformation and I won't get into it in this video, but yes, I eat soy. I eat plenty of it on a daily basis, obviously. What I will do is I will throw all of those spices and the marinade into a bowl and I will toss the tofu and then once it's nice and lathered up, I will toss it into the air fryer and cook it at 400 degrees for 10 minutes. And this makes the tofu nice and crispy on the outside with the marinade. It gives it this really nice glaze that tastes really delicious and uh, holds a lot of flavor too. So tofu is, is pretty bland by itself. It's just I, I would imagine like chicken, if you don't flavor it with anything, it's not gonna taste that great. It does absorb flavor and marinades very well. So making it this way is really, really easy and really delicious too. You can see how nice it came out. So that is what I'll do for my protein. So next, I will make the rice. So this rice is just a vegetable stir-fried frozen packet that Whole Foods has. I know that Trader Joe's also has a version of this that's really good as well. And I will just throw it straight into a skillet with some olive oil and cook it on medium to high heat for like seven to eight minutes. And then also add some other spices. I throw in some turmeric and some cumin. In. And the next thing that I'll do while that is cooking is start chopping up my sweet potatoes. So uh, before chopping them up, I will always rinse my vegetables and you should too, just because you know those vegetables have traveled a very long way. And yes, they are in bags, but bacteria and contaminants could very well have traveled with them even if it is sealed in a bag. So what I'll do is I'll normally rinse it off with water and I'll use this uh, vegetable and fruit spray. It's like a wash that I got from Sprouts and just you know rinse it under the water or rinse it under the sink with water and give it a few sprays and make sure that you, uh, you know, just rinse it thoroughly. And then what I'll do is I will chop up the sweet potatoes. I will throw them into a bowl with a little bit of olive oil. I'll throw some spices on it and then I will toss it into the air fryer again. And this one I'll cook at 400 degrees at about eight minutes, depending on the size of your slices of potatoes, uh, might uh, you know require you to increase the amount of cooking time just because you wanna make sure that it's cooked all the way through. So if it's undercooked, only the top layers will be cooked and the middle will be much harder. So um, I like to have, I like to cook these like, you know, about like half an inch or like a quarter of an inch thick. Throw those in there and forget about it. And then eight minutes later, you pull it out and you've got some really great crispy sweet potatoes. And you can use any type of potatoes in this case. I just really like uh, these sweet potatoes. The next thing I will cook is the broccoli. So same thing, I will rinse it 
under the sink with some water and the spray before chopping it up. And then I will uh, just top, chop up the little florets. Florets, is that what they're called? Chopped it up from a big broccoli to a bunch of little mini broccolis and then threw it into a bowl and then also added some lemon juice and some garlic before tossing it into the air fryer. And with greens, you normally wanna cook them at a lower temperature because they can burn. And I'll throw it in there for 350 for six minutes. And then finally, what you'll see here is this frozen pre-made batch of lentils. And this batch of lentils was actually made by Bianca's grandmother. She was visiting us the other day and she is this lovely abuelita. She's Cuban and she came through and she was like, I'm gonna hook you up with grandma's special lentil recipes and it is really good. Uh, but essentially what it is, it's green lentils with chopped up carrots, onions, cilantro, and potatoes, as well as some additional spices. And like I said, I didn't make this today. This was already frozen in my freezer, and this is something that you can do as well if you ever wanna make a big batch of lentils. Lentils are also packed with protein. This is my favorite source of protein especially for those that want to avoid soy. Like I said, there's no reason to, but if you do want to avoid soy, then lentils would be my next recommendation. There you have it. These are, you know, this is what I eat. This is what I'm eating today. This is not what I eat every day, but this is what I happen to be eating today and is representative of like an average type of um, recipe or average types of recipes that I would consume. If you have more questions about what to eat or suggestions about what you would like to see from this channel, please take this opportunity to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the video. Don't forget to subscribe. I would love to have you here on this channel and learn from each other. So thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in and I will see you next time. Peace out.